The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the December 15th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four ship, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on at 877-927-6640. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Go ahead, send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den. Well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Less Show. Right now, we've got most of the U.S. indices trading to the downside. The only one that is not is the transports. The Dow is off 12. The S&P is down 8. The NASDAQ 101, 12. Russell's down 17. Semi's off 19. Trannies are up 41. You've got gold down 6 bucks. Silver off 36 pennies. Light Sweet Crew down 14 cents. Natural gas up 9 pennies, uh, trying to put in a bottom there and buy the D point, possibly by day's end. Lead the charge dollar-wise. The upside, you got CMC Materials up 44 bucks, 30%. Eli Lilly, 23 bucks, nearly 10%. O'Reilly Automotive, $18, nearly 3%. Tandem Diabetes Care up 13 bucks. That's 10%. And Insolet Corporation up nearly 13 or 5%. To the downside, we've got Amazon of 65 bucks. Shopify, 53. Bay, I don't know how you pronounce that one, down 45. EPAM Systems down 32. Google's off 28. So plenty to uh, look at. But first, we're going to go out to Martinez, California and speak with Brent. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. How are you? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. And I believe we're going to take a look at uh, Merck. MRK is a ticker symbol out here. So let's get that up on the screen and uh, tell me how I can best help you. I am long this with um, some call options, the 7250s. And uh, if you look at the chart, at least in my mind, it's a, there's a very obvious uh, AB equals CD to the upside starting from back in September. That completed mm -hmm. pretty much right on you know, the target. And then the same type of pattern coming down that completed, you know, kind of here at the beginning of uh, December. Yes. And so that's where I bought in. And then I just, you know, just making some bit of a move here. And just want to get your thoughts on you know, areas to be watching, potential to the upside. Sure. Okay. So first on the daily time frame, uh, you're inside a daily profile and the resistance level is what it appears to be targeting. And that's 7570. So that would be a level you'd like to see price close above, at least for two consecutive sessions. If we get that, then we would slide over into the weekly profile. It's a relatively wide profile, and that would suggest to move up to 83.19. But before price does that, the battleground would be at 77.65. That's the top of the monthly. So your battlegrounds right now from a profile standpoint are 75.70. Above that is 77.65, and then if you can clear that, you'd be off to 83.19. Before I pull over my daily white background chart, any questions about these charts or these profile levels? No, that's great. That's what I was looking for. 
perfect. Okay. So on the daily time frame, Brett mentioned the A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. It also formed a TD9 count bottom. It did that at the breakout support level of 71.86. Today, what you like is that price is above that red oscillator and change line. So nothing additional to add here because it just then suggests, Brent, those levels that we looked at. So 75, 70 in the daily, uh, the monthly, and then the, uh, then the weekly time frame. So everything, you've got a nice bottom pattern out here everything looks good and uh, it's just a matter of how price still deals with those uh, battleground areas all right that's fantastic steve i appreciate it that uh, as always <laughs> you provided hey. what i was looking for so i appreciate perfect. that and yeah perfect just, just have yourself a great day and a, and a great week okay Okay, thanks. That was Brent in Martinez, California. That ticker symbol there was uh, Merck. Now, yesterday I did a very poor job of getting to everybody's request out there. So my apology for that. But uh, all that meant was that you have to just wait an extra day. So now I don't have the names of who was asking for what. I just know the uh, symbols out here. So I want to go ahead and get to those. Then we'll go to the markets out here. So one was to take a look at FedEx. So as we look at uh, FedEx, FDX is the ticker symbol right now. It's trading back inside its uh, daily profile been inside there now basically for the last three trading sessions so your support area is 233.49 237.55 and resistance is 241.61 now price is also pulling back to test support on the weekly level that's the top of the weekly profile so the level to be watching here is 238.54 if price were to close below that then that brings out the 237.55 the 233.49 area again that's just simply from a profile standpoint as we pull over the white background chart and we take a look at it for its daily time frame we can see that price is below its red oscillator and change now that just changed colors yesterday and if price remains below that level that level by the way is 241 189 that suggests lower price so that would say okay we're likely going to go target the um, bottom of that profile 233.49 what fedex does have it had a td9 count top that stopped the move higher on november 15th which then formed a td9 count bottom that stopped the move lower on december the 11th out here no pattern other than just simply take a look at the tas market profiles the asset and change line to get a feel for price is likely headed but in this case here again a rejection or close below that red oscillator and change line would suggest lower price for Federal Express. Weekly time frame chart, it has a TD9 count bottom as well. We talked about our price was testing that key level of support. That was the top of its profile. Old resistance can become new support. So not much else that I can provide to you with regard to Federal Express. Thanks for waiting an extra day, whoever did that. The next question, I knew this I, This one did come from Hector and the fuel injectors, and that was to take a look at NVIDIA. Uh, my guess is that Eddie and Boca would like to look at NVIDIA as well. Here's what we know. Price is trading below and has been trading below for the last three trading sessions the bottom of its daily profile. That was at 293.85. That suggests lower price. As we take a look at the weekly profile, though, it says, hey, hold your horses, Steve-O. And the hold your horses is price is traded back to the bottom of its profile. So the key level there to be watching is 275.79. So, Eddie, Hector, Patty, uh, watch 275.79. If there's a closed blowout on a weekly basis, that suggests that NVIDIA should head lower. So the question is, head lower to where? Well, as we open up the daily time frame chart, what we can see the head lower would be to the 242.82 level. That is this TD9 breakout area. And a close below this hammer candle from the trading session of December 6, that low is 280.38. That would then generate an A to B equals CD downside pattern. So NVIDIA looks like it's got um, some work to do, but what might save it is the bottom of that weekly profile so the key level to be watching there 275.79 we get back from this break we'll go take a look at marvell and pfizer to wrap things up steve rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, 
is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back. We'll take a look at Marvell Technology, MRVLT. MRVL is the ticker symbol out here. And what we can see right now is that price is just consolidating with inside its daily profile. It's above the weekly and above the monthly. But the weekly chart is the one that's really kind of controlling things right now. As we open up the white background charts, what we'll see on a weekly basis is a TD9 count top. Uh, it, it's got an A to B equals CD pattern, most certainly. We don't. The week is not over. It's only Wednesday. But at this stage here, you could also be confirming a sell the T point if we get that bearish reversal candle. At the present time, it is a bearish dark cloud cover, but it's hard to call a weekly candle based on Wednesday's, Wednesday's action. But this does suggest that price should move back to test the oscillator and change line. That's in the 78.56 level. So when we take a look at price trading with inside the profiles on a daily basis, the bottom of that profile is 79.12. The top of the weekly is 76.12. So at this stage here, uh, and we'll go take a look at the daily chart, it would appear that Marvell's going to pull back in the 76 to 78 type area out there. On a daily basis, we don't have a topping signal. I don't even have a sell the D point pattern because I don't have that bearish reversal candle. But what we do have is price being below the green oscillator and change line. So the momentum has waned. And uh, that's why I say that it is more, like, more likely than not the weekly chart that is control. And with regard to Marvell, it suggests a further retracement out there. The next question was, or the next instrument to take a look at was Pfizer. I believe that was for Mike, who sent me an email, or Mark, who sent me an email. Or if it's not, then uh, at least we're covering this for Mark and whoever put in that request yesterday. So with regard to Pfizer here, we're looking at the uh, daily time frame. What we have is uh, no sign of a top. Uh, you do have a triggered roads momentum indicator signal, but that needs a bearish reversal candle. So the daily time frame for Pfizer looks like it wants to continue to move higher. As we take a look at the weekly chart out here, the only thing that I've got on a weekly basis is what? A potential for wave number seven. Where's that count? Okay, so all the way back there. But that needs a lower high next week. 
um, to confirm that pattern. But it looks bullish. Price above the top of its weekly profile. Um, it looks to me like Pfizer wants to continue to move higher out there. So the request, I believe, or the question was, uh, your thoughts on analysis, see this is a continuation of a, uh, of a trend to the upside. I, I do. At this stage here, at least with regard to the daily and the weekly, uh, every indication is that Pfizer wants to continue to move higher. So uh, thanks for writing in, Mark. If that was you from yesterday, sorry that I was not able to get to that uh, question. Uh, we've got some questions that have come inside the Tiger's Den. Uh, one coming from Mike. Uh, Mike K. wanted to take a look at the GDX. Uh, gold and the silver. So let's take a look at the GDX here. The GDX right now is uh, pulling back into a prior swing point. Let's take a look at that prior swing point and its volume. That swing point was from the trading session of September 29, 2021. The volume there was 34 million shares. We're at 13 million right now. We're basically almost four hours into trading. So we know that volume here is light. But if it closes inside that swing point, which means below 29.41, but above 2883 it would suggest even though you're coming in with lighter volume you could get back there and test that level but with regard to sellers the sellers were more sellers around in september september 29th to be specific than there are today prices below the bottom of that uh, profile so that's not a good uh, sign out there that's what the daily time frame chart is communicating to us at the same time prices also so as price moving back into the daily swing point with lighter volume the weekly shows that price is testing the bottom of that weekly profile. Now, that weekly profile level is 29.30. Price right now is at 29.19. So be curious to see if this holds coming into the uh, uh, coming into uh, the end of the week out here. Uh, let's take a look at the white background charts for the GDX. Give me a moment just to get those produced and pulled over. Uh, should be here momentarily. And what price is doing as we pull this back, price is testing a TD9 breakout level. That TD9 breakout level is 29.17. No bottoming signals, negated its bottoming signals out here most recently and uh and most certainly today negating the uh well uh, negated the td9 count bottom a while back so right now all you've got is price pulling back on the gdx on a daily basis pulling back into a prior swing point with lighter volume and right into a breakout level on the daily basis 29.17 and right into a support level on the weekly basis the bottom of that profile you also wanted to take a look at gold so as we go take a look at goldilocks out here we'll switch over and do what Let's take a look at this set of charts here. Why? Well, this set of charts here, what we know is, well, first, what I can share with you is December 2nd was a TD9 count bottom. That low out there is 1762.20. Not until price takes that out will that bottom signal get negated. On a weekly basis, price is pointing back to test the bottom of support. That's at 1761. Our low so far uh, today has been 1764.10. So you've got the GDX, Mike, pulling back into support with light volume, pulling back on the daily basis, pulling back into a weekly level of support. The bottom is profile. So, too, is gold. Are these areas going to hold? They may. Support hasn't been broken. What happens if they get broken? Good question. I would say it opens up that door for 1683. That would be the March 8th swing point out there. You also asked to take a look at silver. Now, silver does not look as good as Goldilocks out here. Let's go take a look at those silver charts. Here's silver. And it, oh, that's gold and silver. Well, that's okay. We'll take a look at this silver and then the U.S. dollar index out here. So silver right now is trading below the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. But of course, it doesn't matter what it's doing at Wednesday at 124 in the afternoon. It really matters what is it doing at 4 o'clock on uh, Sunday. I'm sorry, on uh, Friday out here. So right now, but price is pulling back into a swing point. So let's do this here. Let's do take a look at the SLV. Uh, give me a moment to pull that up on our screen. Let's get to the three time frame chart just to understand the volume as it pulls back into that swing point. So that prior swing point is back here from September 29th as well. The volume there, Mike, was 56 million. We're at 20 million as we speak right now. So very much like uh, the GLD or gold. Uh, pulling back into or the GDX pulling back into a swing point with lighter volume, but it hasn't tested the bottom of that swing point. The bottom there would be 1983. So a test of 1983, a rejection meaning a close above 1983 on uh, less than 56 million shares would be a, a bottom signal for the SLV. I assume a bottom signal for silver as well. So that's what we have with regard to gold, silver, and the GDX. We'll see if there's fireworks uh, at the uh, 2 o'clock, 2.30, 3 o'clock time frame out there after the Fed releases its uh, statement as well as the um, interview uh, 
uh, process uh, uh, out there as well. So hope that helps you out, Mike. Thanks so much for writing in. There was another request inside the Tiger's Den. I believe that was take a look at the Roblox out here. RBLX is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's get that rolling out here. RBLX. Let me get that going on my other chart. So Roblox trading below the bottom of its daily and weekly profiles out here. So let's pull the daily back. So it's trading right back into where a big, huge gap with wide price spread. That was on the trading day of November the 9th. It really began the prior trading session, November 8th. But November 9th, this thing moved higher with 93 million shares. We're pulling back into that area with uh, 28 million shares so far. But let's pull over the other charts, see if there's any kind of signals. Is there any kind of bottom signal on a daily basis? The answer is no, there is not. So we see the A to B equals CD to the downside. And we see a breakout level of 7410. So at this stage of the game, it would appear that Roblox is heading towards that 7410 level out there. That's what the daily time frame chart show. Now, we're not really going to get much with regard to the weekly because it has been trading long enough. So let's go back to that black background chart. I'll draw in the A to B equals CD pattern. The swing point, which was, had 15 million shares, you're already passed with 28 million shares. So Roblox has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. We'll get that up here on the screen momentarily, and you'll see what those price projections are. The first one being 86.60, the next one 78.43. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
So the only remaining open question that we have between yesterday and today is uh, what's going on inside of natural gas. So we'd love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877-927-664. You can always send me an email. Do it quickly. Steve at TFNN.com. And put, uh, please put radio show question uh, inside that subject heading. Of course, our Tigers, and I'll take any and every ping out there. So with regard to natural gas, we got the January contract up on our screen. And it does look like today is going to generate a bullish engulfing candle. Now, the bullish engulfing candle here would confirm a couple of different A to B equals CD down patterns to the downside out there. However, uh, we can see that price is also testing its red oscillator and change line. We saw a nice move higher about two days ago. Price ran into resistance. That was the bottom of the gap. That's at $4.04 out there. So strong resistance area. And it also ran into resistance at the uh, red oscillator and change line. So I would wait for price to close above at least the oscillator and change line. That currently is printing right now as we speak at $3.86, 3.869. That's a January contract that we're taking a look at. And if price can close above that, then maybe you've got a, a bottom signal here. Um, what you would need to also see, though, in the coming sessions is certainly a close above $4.04. If you get that, then you at least have a bottom from the standpoint of at least a counter trend rally that could or should take price up to the top of the profile, the daily profile, and that's about $4.57. So it does look like you may get that bullish engulfing candle. You have that at 1.31 in the afternoon. You had that at 7.30, this, 8 o'clock this morning out there. So that hasn't changed. Uh, but what has changed is price is tested, and so far it's rejected that red oscillator and change line. So it really kind of gives you, even with the bullish reversal candle, gives you more of a neutral signal than anything else. Closing above that oscillator and change line, that would be the next slight positive. So let me just check here. No other requests. Um, yeah, no other requests out here. So that's just going to give us time until we do get a request. Just kind of surf around the markets and try to see if we can figure out if there's any tells out here with regard to what the uh, markets intend to do once Fed Powell releases his statement. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's just come back here and take a look at the four equity future contracts. This is where we start. So, as I mentioned uh, during, maybe it was the, uh, as we came on the air, or maybe it was during the update, I can't remember where, when, but here's what we do know. If we take a look at the ES, and you can go take a look at the uh, SPY, if we take a look at the ES Mini, price yesterday got back and tested a swing point. Uh, the top of the swing point was 45.99, tested and rejected. If you go take a look at the SPY, you'll see it did the same thing, and it did it on lighter volume. So, Tom has uh, uh, coined an expression, I own a dollar already, it's going to be $2 now, because it says if you can't bust them to the downside, price will try to bust them to the upside. So that's the message from the ES Mini. In the case of the NQ, which has been fairly weak out here, price has pulled back yesterday and today, testing the bottom of its daily profile, 15723 So a key level of support has held. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, price is testing the center of its bearish structured profile. The center is at 35,413. We're trading at 35,407. Now, let me go over and open this up here momentarily, and we'll just slide the chart over. What the Dow is also doing, it's uh, tinkering with its oscillator and change line, which recently changed color. So yesterday was a, whoops, yesterday was a test and rejection of that. Right now, we're just trading right near it or right on it, so to speak. Another rejection of this would suggest we move higher. Move higher to where? Well, 35,900 inside the Dow is going to be your key resistance level. That is the TD9 breakdown level. That's where I would expect that price would head to if it, in fact, moves higher. So in the ES Mini, it's pretty clear, at least pretty clear to Stevie at this stage here, the message of the markets was it didn't have the volume to push through that swing point yesterday, and maybe that, and we've been at support here in the Q hasn't busted through that. Support really in the Dow is all the way down at the 34 to 30 area, but it's testing a another key area right now. And that's that oscillator and change line. So that takes us over to the Russell 2000, the weaker of the four instruments out here, and prices back to support. And support is the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile, 2139. Now, if we get a close below that 2139 on Friday, that's going to suggest inside the Russell 2000 that we have a change in trend. Right now, price just pulled back to support. There's also another level of support at 2152. That's the bottom of its daily profile. But it's the weekly right now that is being tested. So what do we do from here? So in each case, 
we're back at important levels of support. And when we get to those important levels of support, you know how I like to operate it, which is what are the intraday time frame signals generating for us? What are they suggesting out here? Do we see any signs of a bottom? So to do that, we go take a look at our eight panel chart out here. So momentarily, we'll have those up on the screen. That's going to be eight little squares, white backgrounds out here. The ES mini is what we're starting with. In the upper left, you've got the monthly. And on the bottom right, you've got the 300-minute chart. Let's start with the 300-minute chart, the five-hour chart. You have a confirmed Gartley buy pattern. That happened yesterday with the piercing candle. It took place at 5 o'clock in the evening. If we take a look at the ES mini on the 240-minute chart, we have a TD nine-count bottom. The 120 minute chart, it still has a buy the D point, a confirmed Gartley buy pattern. If we take a look at the 60 minute chart, the ES mini has a TD nine count bottom. If we take a look at the 30 minute chart, we have a TD nine count and Rhodesman Dominicator bottom that is still in place out here. So the ES mini tested and rejected a key uh, swing point yesterday, did it on lighter volume. And each of these charts, 30, 60, 120, 240, and five hour chart, have bottom patterns out there. So you tell me. Is there a tell here with regard to the ES mini and how it should or could or would likely respond to Fed Powell's uh, release out here? I think it is. I, you know, it's, I, well, I, can, I can guarantee you one thing. The ES mini is sending a signal to you and I. It is doing everything in its power to try to form a bottom. Doesn't mean that it will. But boy, we have all the signals here inside the ES mini that that's what it's trying to do. Now, the NQ has traded back to the uh, bottom of its daily profile. So what are its signals generating for you and I? This has been, you know, arguably weaker than the ES Mini. So what is it telling us? Well, we have the same eight panel charts out here. Why the 30 minute chart is black, I don't know. But here's what we do know. Let's start again from the five hour time frame chart, bottom right. Confirmed by the D point, bull sash candle versus a piercing candle, still in play, 240 minute, TD nine count bottom. The 120 minute chart, by the D point, Gartley buy pattern. The 60-minute um, chart still has a valid TD nine count pattern in place, trying to generate a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom as well. And we've got a TD nine count and a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom on the 30-minute chart. So we've got the NQ and the ES that are clearly signaling to you and I their intention. Whether or not they're able to do that, um, before we come into the release of the Fed, we're looking for signals from these charts, and they're not telling us that what they want to do is fall apart. It doesn't mean that they can't. It just tells us that both the ES Mini and the NQ are doing everything in their power to form or try to form some type of bottom. Now, this does not mean that we go take out the all-time highs out there. We could, but that's not necessarily what it means. It could just mean we're in some type of a consolidation, some type of sideways consolidation out here. But my goodness, the NQ and the ES Mini, I'm just I'm narrating the chart for you. You tell me, what do you think these charts are communicating to us? Well, of course, we don't need to stop there, and we won't stop there. We'll go take a look at the Russell 2000. We'll go take a look at the Dow, too. But what are the charts for the Russell 2000 telling us? Now, I don't know this. I haven't looked at it. I've, I've been gone for, for an hour or so. If we take a look at, again, starting over on the right-hand side, the Russell 2000, a five-hour time frame chart, we got no bottom at all out here. Zero zilch. So a 240-minute, we got nothing. The 120-minute chart is uh, trying to, right now as we speak, try to confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. The 60-minute has already confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. The 30-minute does not have a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, but it's trying to. And the daily is actually trying to confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, but it has you in the, the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets. Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. 
With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Sorry about that, folks. I just got too excited and I wasn't paying attention to that clock. And uh, I think for a second day in a row, uh, got uh, thrown a, a flag, was off sides there. Uh, so we were talking about the Russell 2000. And the Russell 2000 daily time frame still has its TD9 count bottom in place. We've got a couple of the intraday time periods that have confirmed bottoming signals out here. It's not as compelling a story as the ES and NQ, but it's not like it's not compelling out here. It's just not as compelling. So let's finish this off by at least taking a look at the Dow Equity Future contracts as well. So we already talked about how on the daily base, that's panel number three up here from the uh, top, on the uh, to, uh, three, from the, uh, three from the left, is testing that green oscillator and change line. So what do we know about the 30-minute time frame chart? Well, on the 30-minute time frame chart, I don't have a real clear signal out here. I don't have a, a confirmed bottom uh, pattern or not, uh, but if we take a look at the 60-minute chart, really the same thing. Not a confirmed bottom signal, nor do I have that on the 120, nor do I have it on the 240, nor do I have it on the five-hour chart. So the least compelling chart is the one that is the strongest right now. When I say the strongest, the one that has had the least retracement um, uh, for the for the most part out here. So now what the Dow does have, it still has that daily TD nine count bottom. And if price regain, regains that green oscillator and change line out here, it doesn't really need to form these bottom signals on the intraday time frame charts. It's the ones that were pushing those other levels of support out there, um, such as the bottom of their profiles like the uh, Russell and the NQ, and then the uh, ES mini, which was testing a key swing point that it rejected out there. So if you're asking me, which I think you are, whoever you are, is there some kind of tell as to how the equity markets uh, may respond to Powell's notes? I can tell you that the way that the charts are communicating to us is that we should see a market that ends up moving higher. Now, how much higher? You know, that, that I don't know. I'm not expecting anything significant, but what I would be watching for that answer would be, should the market move higher, would be 35,900 level. And that's in the YM, that's the TD9 breakdown area. That level, as we can see a couple of days ago, that's where price made its way up to, found that area as resistance and closed back below it. So that's gonna be the real key level to be watching out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to the potential tells of the market. And uh, soon enough, uh, we will uh, see, or at least by day's end, uh, we will see whether or not these charts were correct and what they were communicating to both you and I. So what other piece? Well, I do have a request that has come in. Uh, it looks like two requests. So let's get to those here. I don't want to fall behind like I did yesterday. This one coming in from Nancy. And Nancy wants to take a look at Apple. So Nancy's question is, 
Steve, could you give your take on Apple, please? Yeah, I can. So let me do this here. We've got to change screens. Give me a moment to do this. Otherwise, Mr. Bill's going to bop me upside the head with a two-by-four. And uh, today, I really don't feel like getting that bop, so to speak. Uh, not that really any day I feel like getting that bop, but, uh, you know, today I don't really need that. So as we take a look at Apple, what I know about Apple here, Nancy, is that it formed a TD9 count top. And it did that a uh, couple of uh, days ago when it made that high. Uh, I, I know that because I remember checking it out for somebody. So now we've got a new profile that is formed out here. Prices trading with inside it. So the support level to be watching, I know, I know you've got a valid top. That was the TD9 count on December the uh, 13th. We'll take a look at the app. I believe that was a bar following bar number nine. So support that you're going to watch is 170.93. Now on a weekly basis, I've got an A to B equals C to the upside. No bearish reversal candle yet. And even if price gets down to 170.93, that might get to a piercing candle, but might not, actually. It would be a close below that that would then signal lower price. So let's pull over the white background chart. Let's just confirm what Stevie said here. And boom, voila, we can see the TD9 count top. Now, what price is also doing, Nancy, it's testing that oscillator and change line. So very similar to the YM. So you got a valid top, but price holding a key level of support right now. The signal to us in Apple is neutral. If price closes below that green oscillator and change line, then it says 170.93. And below that, then the answer you could see move back to 157.80. That is where Apple's most recent TD9 breakout level is at. Here on the weekly time frame, bar number nine likely to form this week. That would suggest to move back to the 163.90. So you got 163.90, 170.93, and 157.80. Those are the magic numbers to be watching inside of Apple. But the first and most important one will be that 170.93 level. So I hope that that helps you out. Uh, Nancy, thanks so much for writing in. Uh, the next question coming in from Jeff. Jeff writes in and says, uh, Steve, the Federal Reserve appears that it's going to begin raising interest rates. Sorry, I had to take a quick swig there. Uh, aren't you concerned that that's going to uh, create a, uh, a crash scenario for the equity markets? Hmm. So that's a great question out there. And uh, Jeff, I would, I would ask this question, even though you can't answer it, but I'm going to ask it. I'm going to ask that to everybody else that's listening. My question to you is, right now with regard to where is it that you have more trust? Do you have more trust putting your money into a company like Apple? Okay, Nancy was calling about Apple. Would you have more confidence in putting your money inside of Apple or some type of debt instrument? Which one do you have more confidence in, government or business? Another way to frame that question. I would suggest to you that the consensus around the globe is that they have more confidence in business, companies, corporations than they do government. And so the cool thing here, Jeff, is that if we go back in time, we take a look at other time periods where we had that same shift where people distrusted government and trusted corporations out there. In those periods, when we've seen interest rates, interest rates rise, that was always good for the stock market. It's the opposite. It's the opposite of that. And what you're insinuating, if you have more confidence in government than you do in business. So I would just simply throw the question back to you. Where do you have more confidence? Now, that's not to say we don't have knee jerk reactions. We always get knee jerk reaction. But if you're asking me bigger picture, if we are in a environment of rising rates, is that going to be is that what's going to be bad for the stock market? My answer would be absolutely positively no. That that's not would call that's it certainly wouldn't cause a crash, and that would not necessarily no. If you if you listen to me over the last couple of days out here, I'm a bit concerned, and that concern is, and this has nothing to do with rising rates out there. My concern is that we may have a significant top that's in place, based upon what I look at on the early charts, based upon and the highs very well may be in out here. So are interest rates going to be the thing that are going to croak the market? Only if you have more confidence in government. And I find it hard to find folks that actually say, yeah, I trust the government more than I do corporations out there. So that that's my take. I hope that that helps to uh, answer that question. Okay, so no other questions that I see at the moment. Uh, there was something inside the Tiger's Den. Uh, Dan, I did not get my uh, sense of taste uh, back. Of course, many people would tell you that I had no taste to begin with. Um, so it's very limited. And smell, kind of like it's a beautiful thing. I have absolutely 
no smell. You know, the easy way to test the smell thing, or at least has been for me, is to um, is to light a match, right? Anybody who lights a match, you know, you smell that. Is it sulfur or whatever it is, the components of that? I mean, it's it's an indistinguishable smell. So I tried that a couple of days ago just to see if I had any of those smell senses back. And the answer was, uh, no, I did not. So bummer there, I suppose. It is what it is. Uh, yeah, saving a lot of not buying air fresheners. Good point there, Jimmy. Yeah, it is too bad. It is what it is. So, anyways, uh, we'll get back to this break here. I think there was a request to take a look at DBN, uh, and we'll do that for SNP. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at Devon Energy. Ticker symbol there is DBN. And what we can see here, like a couple of the other charts that we looked at, is prices pulling back and testing the bottom of its weekly profile. So the key level there, S&P, is going to be 38.27. If you get a close below 38.27, that likely suggests lower prices. Now, lower prices to where? Well, if we look at the daily time frame chart, price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. It's got a Rhodes momentum indicator top. It could take us all the way down to the 29.21 level. At least that is where price broke out from. So that becomes an area to watch. As we look at the weekly time frame chart, we populate it. Its breakout level is 24.46. So the bottom of that weekly profile 
for Devon Energy. And by the way, this week is going to confirm or appears that it will confirm a Rhodes Mint indicator top. So that level of support of 38.27 is a very key level. Can hold. Uh, but if it fails, boy, that's telling you that Devon Energy wants to head lower. The other request out here was to take a look at FANG. F-A-N-G is the ticker symbol. And uh, that is uh, what? That is Diamondback Energy. So Diamondback Energy right now is trading into support. That's the bottom of its daily profile. That's at 101.97. Last time we were down here, it did 2.9 million shares. You're already at 2.2 million shares. So it's pushing into this with more energy. Let's pull over the um, Diamondback Energy white background chart, see what other signals we have out here really not much so i would say a close below the swing point from uh december the second that low was 99.52 that could set off a move down to 81.61 that is the td9 breakout level for the daily time frame on a weekly basis as we take a look at diamond back it's got a td9 count top a Rhodes Mintum indicator top that suggests move to 9402 that's the top of its daily profile so Fang looks like it wants to continue to move lower the, con the confirmation of that I would say would be a close below 9952 so SNP I hope that helps you out thanks so much for your patience and writing in folks uh, the fireworks should begin in about uh, four minutes or so and uh, we've got a great director of fireworks that's David White with the power trading hour Tom O'Brien he'll take us on home and uh, I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. So have a wonderful Wednesday, folks. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you again soon.